All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build this simple flip card interaction. Um, essentially, what we have is a card, and when I click on it, it gives you your information. So this could be a question, right? So what's your question? And we check the answer. So nice, simple flashcard interaction. Uh, it's really easy to build. One of my keys here was I wanted to build something that I could easily replicate. So all I'm using is a selected state. So this is my card. You can make the card look any way you want to. When I click on the card, you've got your selected state. I click on it and you're back to your normal state. Now the other thing you'll notice down here, we have kind of this card stack. When I click and drag this, what happens, you can see the card stack diminishes. So it gives the illusion of the objects disappearing. right? And the way that works is I have another shape that's just stacked underneath this. So it's like edge one, edge two, edge three. And then this right here is just a trigger. So what I have is a trigger that when I drag and drop, so there's a hot spot here. So when I drag and drop this card on the hot spot, it triggers the motion path. So it creates that sense of movement. And it also hides or changes the state of this object, this edge, to hidden. So you can see it's moving it and it's changing it to hidden. So that's how that works. So let's go ahead and build one real quick from scratch. And again, the key is I wanted something that was really quick and easy to copy and paste and reuse. So if I was doing a flash card, I might have 20 flash cards. So you build the one flash card and then it's easy enough to replicate the others. So this is pretty simple. So I've got a card and the card has three triggers on it. So there's the motion path triggers, right? So I've got one for left and one for right. So I have hot spots here. And then I have this third trigger um, right here, which has changed the state of this edge to hidden when the user drags on either right or left. Uh, we're not going to worry about that because that's just kind of a decoration anyway. But you can see how that works. You can look at it in the source file. So let's go ahead and create a new slide. And let's do that. We're going to create a new slide. Let me get rid of these guides here so you can see it a little better. So the first thing we want to do is just create a card. So we're going to create a shape. It could be anything, a picture, whatever. And on this card we're going to create a state. So we're going to create a edit states and we're going to create a selected state. So you can see that's right here. And selected states like an on off switch. So I can select an object and then it's in a selected state. And when I click on it again I can deselect it. So we're going to change our selected state and turn it into orange. And you can put anything in here, text, pictures, whatever. And so that becomes your selected state. So if we preview this, what we have is our normal state. We have our selected state. We click on it again, we're back to normal. So that's kind of how the flip card works. And what's nice about this is I can duplicate it. And now I've got those selected states. So now I've got two flip cards and it didn't really take a lot of work to do that. And then I just have to change the content in the flip card. So we're going to delete this one. So that's how that flip card works. Now we're going to add our motion path trigger. So we're going to insert some hot spots. And those are basically invisible shapes. And we'll just put one over here and we'll copy one over here. Now you'll notice that it says hot spot one, hot spot two. That doesn't mean anything to us. So we're going to use our timeline to title these objects. So this here is a card. Right now, the hot spot one is actually we'll just say HS left, so we know where that's going, and this is HS right. So now we've got our hot spots. What we're going to do is add a motion path. So we're going to go to animations. So let's add a motion path. Choose a line animation. We're just going to click and drag this, and we'll just move it off screen somewhere. I'm going to add another motion path. And we're going to do the same thing. Let's just add it off screen somewhere. Now we don't want the animation to be this fast, but that's okay. We're going to look at it first and then we can make some modifications. So basically when you create an animation, Storyline is going to have the animation triggered when the timeline of the slide starts. And we want to change that. So we're actually going to delete these triggers that Storyline creates for us so we don't have those. Let's go ahead and create our own triggers. What do I want to do? I want to move this object on the motion path when I drop it on a hot spot. So let's create our first trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to move object, which is the card, on motion path one. 
when the user drops the card on the left. And we go and we're set. Now we're going to copy this trigger and we're going to paste it. So here's our second one. Let's go ahead. We want to move it on motion path 2 when it's dropped on the right. So let's go ahead and double click on the trigger wizard. Change it from left to right. So move card on line motion path 2 when object is dropped uh, when the object, the card, is dropped on the right. So what we should do have here is a simple flip card. And when I click and drag it, you can see it triggers it. Now a couple things. One is when we started the animation, see where it, I'm going to drag it over here, but what happens, it's flipping back over here and then starting the animation. And that's right. And that's the way it's supposed to work is because there's a card here and when I trigger the animation it's going to trigger the animation from the card start point. But the card is actually being moved so we want to have a relative start point. So go ahead and select your motion path and we're going to go to motion paths and we're going to do some relative start point. We're going to select this motion path here oops, and we're going to select relative start point. The other thing is we might want it to move a little faster so I'm going to actually make it move uh, 0.5 seconds. And we're going to select this one too. And let's go ahead and select up. Oh, my mouse is not getting quite on the motion path. So we're going to select this and we're going to make this 0.5 as well. So now if we preview this, it's going to, we've got our selected state. And when we move it, you can see how that works. So that's basically it. And then you're done. Now, What's cool about this is I can hit Control D. Look at this. And now I have all these flip cards. I'm going to line them up. So I'm going to go to the format. I'm going to align them here, line center and align middle. Now they're all lined up. And I'd probably want to title them, but look at what happens. So we've got all these flip cards. All right? Look. And you can see the flip card interaction works. And you can probably tweak it a little bit on the animation, but that's basically it. So you can deconstruct the source file. There's a little bit more like with the edges and stuff, and you can see how that works. And you can make them look any way you want to. So like when we look at this, you can see the states are very specific in how they look. But you can do that. It's just the, uh, the visual part of it. But that's basically it. You create a selected state that creates that flip card. It makes it really easy uh, to work. You create those motion path animations and when you duplicate the card, you can see the motion paths came with those. So a really simple interaction to build and a nice one to kind of reuse. Then if you want to save it as a template, you just go to File, go to Save As. Then instead of saving this as a um, storyline file, just save it as a storyline template. And then the next time you go to use it, oops, let me close this. The next time you go to use it, when you insert slides, you can come to the templates tab here and then you can choose that from your templates that you saved. So that's basically it. Create the interaction. It's really simple, really easy to reuse. Make it look nice and save it as a template and then you can use it in any project that you have.